You see, we've been taught you don't have to look it to be it. <laughs> and in order to prosecute a reality that is coming from the realm of the immortals, you need to subscribe sufficiently to grace to receive empowerment to carry out the functions that are lending on you by the wisdom and the protocol that comes from the realm of reality. Because by strength shall no man prevail. In this business, you don't have the capacity to prosecute what God demands on you, of you, from the energy of the flesh. And because it is not fulfilled on the frequency of flesh, every one of us is given equal privilege, access and opportunity. Grace is the equalizer in our operations in the kingdom. By the provisions of grace, the weakest man can become the, the mightiest of all. So when we declare in confidence of the possibilities that are bound in the life of a believer, we are not just talking to motivate them. We are talking because we have an understanding of the economy of grace that is at work in this dispensation. Enabling people to come into a heritage that was written concerning them before the foundations of the world. Your life is a story that the Lord is telling from eternity. And the only way you can gain access and capacity to prosecute that which God is saying from the realms of the spirit is as you latch onto the grace that is provided you on account of his wisdom and his mercy. And the moment you make contact with that operation of God, you'll be amazed that you, who before the moment of encounter was a nobody, will become one that will be the brightest among everybody. Because even the most charismatic among us is not qualified. Because it's not on the strength of flesh. It is within the provisions of grace. You see, Jesus, who was the Son of God, the custodian of everything that formulated the personality called the Godhead, he could not achieve anything for the kingdom except as he encountered the grace that empowered him for the workings of God. He was a good man for 30 years, but he could not shake the territory where he found himself. But the day he made that encounter with divinity, the day that the mandate was proclaimed from heaven, the day that he entered through the corridor of process and secured the requisite alignment for empowerment, the Bible said the carpenter that went to the mountain, he returned as a bright light. And he said that it might be fulfilled that which was written by Isaiah the prophet. In the land of Zebulun, in the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile, he said the people that sat in darkness, they have seen a great light. He was a man for 30 years, a very good man, an upright man. But when grace began to walk out a protocol in his life, he was no longer called a man. He was addressed as the light that brought out people from the shackles of death. It doesn't matter where you are. You may be the most disadvantaged of all men. All you need to do is to encounter the protocol of grace. By the time this wisdom of the immortals begin to find expression through you, you'll be amazed that what you call weakness will become the window through which reality begins to find expression. I've seen people who cannot talk. They are literally considered to be, to be, to be docile and weaklings. People who could not give expression even to their motivation. Suddenly something alights upon them. And every utterance that proceeds from their lips becomes the utterance of the monarch of Zion. It is not by power. It is not by might. It is by the spirit. I trust the living God that by the time we are rounding up this meeting, most of you will live here set ablaze for Jesus. <laughs> the places you run away from temptation, you will go back there conquering darkness and uninstalling principalities. <laughs> ah. Faith is the wisdom of God playing, playing out in time. Faith <laughs> is the wisdom of God. You don't know how a man who before now was a non-entity suddenly becomes a veteran because he can perceive something from another realm. You will collide with something in the course of this meeting. You will collide with something. Some of us were not willing to preach the gospel. We had our ambitions. We had our plans. We were wise in our own ways until light appeared to us. We were wise. And even when light showed up, we were, some of us were sicklers, weaklings. But suddenly strength came from Zion. And you can stand before thousands and proclaim the counsel of God. 
You don't even know by what means, by what wisdom, by what technology you could do the things you do. It is the walking of grace. Tonight I want to show you where your journey in God is supposed to begin from. One of the worst things that have bedeviled the church today is the force of religion. So we are choked by activities, all kinds of activities. But there is no transformation, there is no impact on ground. Because we were not showed where to begin. There is a place where every man begins his journey in God. And if you just stumble into the, 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 the race, you may find yourself running in cycles and circles. And your life will not transform to meaning, to not translate to, to relevance. Because the things we do, they have their roots in the spirit. You see, Pastor Bernard was trying to, to bring us an emphasis while he was expounding on the word of the Lord. And it, he, he said something striking. The very place where you go to pray in tongues for 10 hours is the same location where they come to carry out enchantments. Meanwhile, it is impossible for light and darkness to cohabit. If what you are doing is truly light, the moment they come to the vicinity of your oppression, everything they do is supposed to shut down. That you are doing all you are doing and they still have results and there is potency in what they are doing is a statement that what you are doing is not striking a chord in the realm where it matters. The worst thing that can happen to you is to master how to do spiritual activities and not make contact with essence and life. <laughs> If you lose touch with Zion, you are lost. It doesn't matter what you proclaim on earth. If you lose touch with Zion, you are lost. <laughs> the reason marriage is a great mystery is because our union with Christ is the only basis where we can walk in immortality. We become one with him. And that begins from now. That's what the church is. But there are a lot of people running the rat race. Doing all kinds of things. Even when they are speaking in tongues, they are out of the spirit. Because they have mastered how to carry out the spiritual gimmicks. They don't know that every time we are someone to stand before God, we are making contact with hallowed entities. <laughs> every inspiration that comes to you, that you think is just a thought hitting your spirit, is actually a vote of life opened by a custodian in the spirit. Every time you receive an inspiration, a, an entity in the realm of the spirit opened a vote and you collided with reality. You thought it's an inspiration. So you don't understand the entities that you are interacting with. You don't know the beings that you have been summoned to work with as partners. If you know the angels that are walking side by side with you, every time you alter a word from your mouth, you will do it with hallowedness. You will do it with humility. Because the utterances that are coming upon your lips, they were whispered to you by angels. And some of these angels have lived for aeons. They were there when the foundations of the world were sculpted. And they have worked with the people that are carrying out the assignment you came to continue. You are only part of a chain that is stretched from eternity. They whisper to the people that handed over the baton to you. <laughs> you come, you think it's a function of what you want to do. You don't have understanding. If you know that the time is not long, every breath that comes upon your nostry will become a, an investment in eternity. Life is deeper than everything you think it is. It's not breath on your nostril. It is an investment of God upon a water vessel. That time you thought about going to pray. If you knew the angel that whispered to you, you will run to the place of prayer. If you knew how many people, how many generations before you, that that angel have whispered the same thing to, in order to sustain that heritage that has been handed over to you as a custodian in your dispensation, you will not sleep for one night. The reason somebody is saying, praise the Lord in Abiyo's area, is because many intercessors stood their ground before you came. And you have been numbered into a long chain of an ancestry of intercessors. Working in partnership with angels that keep the vote of prayer. But you think it's something you do out of pleasure. You don't understand that every time that you are, you are motivated to pray, heaven have lifted its hand and rested upon you. 
the policies that are coming from heaven at that time is dependent on you to enact so you think it's all about prayer that is why you can go to the place of prayer and your goal is to beat three hours of tongues if you knew what reality was coming from heaven you will understand that every time you lift your voice in prayer you are actually instituting an, imm an immortal pillar that will stand as a memorial and a testament for the life of Jesus your life begins to end the day you disalign with the immortals it doesn't matter how much breath you have in your nostril the day you disalign with the immortals you begin to die you don't know what life is <laughs> they motivate people to come to church people come to church and they array programs to excite their emotions fertilizing demonic appetites the same appetites you fertilize in church is the same appetite that leads them astray from jesus Who will run my life? Spirit of the living God You will run my life Yahweh You will run my life Spirit of the living God They are discouraged. You think it's about number. <laughs> it's partnership. It's partnership. It's fusion with heaven. It's not number. Because even if we are a thousand men, the moment we come together, we ascend as one man. We become a corporate persona. Eight partners with heaven. What you are doing is that you are giving legality for heaven to come to earth. It's not what you are doing, heaven depends on. Heaven only wants you to give them access 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 if you have this understanding even if you are the only man in the prayer room you will pray like a dying man come and run my life spirit of the living god come and run my life Yahweh. Spirit of the living God, come and run my life.
God bless you so much. We believe you've been mightily blessed. And also you wish to make the life of someone also get this blessing that you have just received. We would like you to do so by clicking on the share button. Share to your loved ones, your friends, your family members. And don't also forget to subscribe on Reflector Hub TV. And also click on the notification bell to always stay in touch with all our recent posting. Thank you. God bless you.